Cartoon Darkness. Album Alternative 2024. Amel and the Sniffers. I wanted the album to feel really fun. Amel and the Sniffers vocalist Amy Taylor tells Apple Music of Cartoon Darkness, the Australian quartet's third full length. That goal does, however, come with a caveat. I wanted it to feel fun without putting up the blinkers and being like, everything's sweet, all good. Things are really weird and things are pretty bad and there's a lot of things to be stressed about, but there's the balance of it. Not to encourage people to ignore the bad, but to try and find more of a balance. So while Cartoon Darkness finds Taylor confronting issues such as body positivity, the ills of social media, the climate crisis, and capitalism's impact on society and people's well-being, she does so with an unrelenting lust for life and an indefatigable spirit that, on songs such as, Jerkin, and, Motorbike Song, adheres to the adage that life is for the living. Recorded with Nick Lane, Midnight Oil, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, at Dave Grohl's Studio 606, which boasts the same mixing desk on which Nirvana recorded Nevermind and Fleetwood Mac did rumors, I really didn't want to spill anything on it, laughs Taylor, the band approached Cartoon Darkness with a specific sonic goal in mind. Bryce Wilson, drums, and Declan Martins, guitar, were really keen to try and explore different sounds and make it feel a bit more like a studio album, says Taylor. Adds Martins, in the past we've tried to see how everything would relate to when we perform it live. And even though a lot of these songs will be included in the set, I think we just wanted to make sure the focus was on making the best listening experience at home rather than making the best songs to be taken live. A typically fiery slice of raw punk rock, albeit one that takes a breather on the gentler, big dreams, and, bailing on me, the end result is what Taylor calls, the first album we feel really proud of from the get-go. Here, Taylor and Martins walk Apple Music through cartoon darkness, track by track. Jerkin, Amy Taylor, it's a tongue-in-cheek poke at keyboard warriors, at the haters in general. It's just a fuck you to anyone who's down to accept it. Declan Martins, this was conceived earlier than the intense writing period. We came up with it in the early half of 2023. It has a good intensity. Despite this being our attempt at a studio album it does replicate what we do live, which is straightaway energy. Et. I really wanted to write a song that big upped yourself while bringing down the haters. I wanted it to be like, I'm sick, you're shit. Chewing gum. Et. So much of life is just a carrot dangled in front of your head. Like you're just around the corner from being able to take a break, or the goodness is always just around the corner. And it's so much hard work. Under capitalism you're just constantly working for goals you can never seem to hit. I feel that robs people of themselves and robs people of happiness and joy. Something else that robs people of those things is criticism and judgment. I think with social media, a lot of people are constantly bombarded with how they should be and what they could do and what they might be and how bad they are. I feel that robs people of the joy of making mistakes, and making mistakes is so important for growing up. I want to make the wrong decision sometimes, and I want to have fun and I want to feel love even if that's a wrong decision, even if that's a dumb decision, because what else is the point? Tiny Bikini Et. I always try and consciously surround myself with women, but sometimes it doesn't work out. Even in the studio I was the only lady of maybe 8 dudes in the room. So I was just channeling that energy. Going, yeah it's technically my space, but I'm the only one here in a bikini. I think a lot of my experience in life is being the only lady, and I feel like, for me, I love expressing myself in slutty ways. The world is a boring place, and to dress up or to be scantily clad or just be interesting is something I value, so that song is going, that's what I like. Big Dreams. DM, I write a whole scope of heavy and soft songs, and finding the softer songs, place in Amel and the Sniffers has always been a challenge, I've had a fear of doing it. So I showed it to Amy and she really enjoyed it and encouraged it. I think a lot of the misconception is that it's experimenting, but I feel like these sorts of songs have always been in us. I prefer to refer to it as exploring rather than experimenting. Et. A lot of people in my life have really big dreams and they are really talented, and they are trying to make something of themselves. The world is a harsh place, and even if they're super talented, it's really difficult because of the cost of living and the oversaturation of everything. And it's like we're all getting older and a lot of people's dreams may not happen, but that internal energy, it's still swirling inside you. It's mine. DM, the guitar, has, a really odd tuning that I'd never used before. 
Me and Nick, Lane, had worked to get this really direct, harsh, aggressive guitar sound, and that's what makes it unique, it makes it sound like you've just stuck your head in a bucket of bees swarming. At, lyrically, it's a subconscious dump trying to explore lots of different themes, the pressures of bodies to be perfect, and it's saying it might not be perfect but it's mine. In dipping into the confusion of consumerism and getting swept up and wanting to buy stuff. It's a big mix of that. Motorbike song. Et. It's a yearning for freedom. Life can be so stuffy, especially with screens and technology, so much of it is sitting still and looking at a screen for hours. I just saw a motorbike driving along and I wanted to embody the motorbike. I don't want to ride it, I want to be the motorbike. DM. When we were working it out it felt like a SoCal. 80s punk song and it developed into more of a motorhead type thing. It's fun, it's got my most guitar solos on one song ever. Doing in me head. DM, I was trying to write a disco song. I wanted it to be like the Gap Band. But I guess when you bring it to some Australian punks it comes out as, doing in me head. Et, this song kind of embodies the whole of cartoon darkness. Like it touches on the fact we all use our phones and social media, and they favor outrage, and subconsciously the system floods us with negative emotions and then it profits off that. It kind of dictates our life, not the other way around. You have to favor the algorithm, it won't favor you. And talking about how spoon-fed our generation especially is in the lack of critical thinking. Pigs. Et. Sometimes people are like, I know more so, therefore, I'm better than you and you're an idiot. I don't agree with that, because I've been on both sides of knowing stuff and not knowing stuff, and being an idiot and being a legend. So this song is saying, we're all pigs, you're not better than me, we're all just pigs in the mud. DM, I'm really fond of the chorus. It's a recycled riff that I wrote before our self-titled album that we jammed on but never became a song. Now, with my new knowledge in music, five or six years on, I found a way to make it interesting. I remember seeing that excitement in Amy's face when I first started playing it differently. Bailing on me, et. I was really struggling to write lyrics to it and figure out what to say and Declan was like, I think it's a sexy song, try and make. It horny. I was trying to do that but was like, I really don't get that vibe from this song. So I ended up making it a heartbreak song. DM, I think it's interesting that my intention was horny and Amy interprets heartbreak. I think that's a funny way of looking at it. You should not be doing that. Et. So much of my experience in the music world has been people trying to hold me back with their negativity and their limitations. Because they've made limitations for themselves that I don't subscribe to. They might be saying you shouldn't be doing that and I can't believe you're doing that, but I am doing it, and you're not. I'm over here experiencing this with the choices that I've made. And you're down in Melbourne having a bitch while you're doing lines at 4 a.m. with other 50 year olds, bitching about a 24 year old. There are Facebook groups with old rockers being like, I don't like that band, she's crap. Kiss my ass. Do it, do it. Et. For some reason, I always imagine some random athlete trying to listen to this to G up, so that's what it's about. Someone being like, yeah, I'll fucking get up and run. DM, this was the last riff I came up with before moving to the US. The working title for it was, Pornhub Awards, because, the night before, I found a free ticket to the Pornhub Awards. I didn't win anything. Going somewhere. Et. Anyone can find dirt, but it takes hard work to find gold. It's the easiest thing in the world to criticize. People are just lazy, and they're not trying hard enough to find the good in stuff. There's no perfect world and there's not going to be utopia, because utopia would be dystopia anyway. It's just saying I'm going to go somewhere, hopefully you can come there too. Me and the girls. DM, Amy sent me this hip-hop song that had like an Eddie Van Halen sort of guitar sample in it, and I was like, I've got a riff that's super repetitive, almost like a sample, a loop, and I wrote it when I was 21. It's called, Fry Pan Fingers, because I used to stick my fingers on the frying pan to callous them before gigs when I was young. So I was like, alright, Amy, here's this repetitive riff like a hip-hop loop that I've got. Et. I needed a lyric for the chorus, so I was like, Declan, now's your chance, do you want to do a duet? I said, me and the girls are drunk at the airport, and he's like, I can't believe that it's an open bar, and I loved it, but everyone else was like, this is a bit weird. We'd been listening to a lot of Beastie Boys so we were like, 
Let's add in the vocoder on his voice and make it sound like that. 